Well, welcome uh, everyone to the Houston Tech Rodeo, uh, the aerospace space track uh, mm -hmm. session that you're about to witness is why invest in Houston's aerospace industry? And today we're honored to have uh, two remarkable individuals who have been incredibly supportive uh, in uh, the aerospace uh, domain in Houston. Um, we have uh, Bob Mitchell, who is the, the president of the Bay Area Houston Economic Partnership. Bob has been uh, an incredible advocate and supporting investment in Houston's aerospace domain. And then we're honored to have Dr. Cam Gafarian today. Cam is the uh, head of IBX, the uh, president, chief executive officer, and he has uh, been an entrepreneur in the aerospace industry, especially in Houston. Cam is the founder of Axiom Space and Intuitive Machines, two uh, organizations that we had the pleasure of hearing from yesterday in the aerospace space track. And Cam is also the founder of Limitless Space Institute as uh, a nonprofit leading research and development to educate and inspire the next generation to uh, travel outside of this solar system. So I wanna uh, pass it off to uh, both Dr. Gafarian and Bob. Uh, have a great uh, morning here and uh, share please uh, some of the experiences and wisdom that you've uh, both accumulated in this. Thank you again for your participation this morning. Thank you, Paul. Cam, why don't you go ahead and kick start it, and then uh, I'll say a few comments and then we'll get right into the questions. Okay, uh, it's a pleasure to participate in this session. Uh, I sort of consider uh, Houston my second home. Uh, believe it or not, even though uh, at times I live in Florida and I live in Maryland, I have a place now next to Clear Lake. And uh, probably about uh, half of my time now, I stay in Houston, engage with the companies, and I'm delighted to be part of this session, Bob. Thank you. Cam, thanks a, lot. thanks a lot. First of all, I want to thank the Houston Tech Rodeo for allowing me to participate this morning. And I want to thank uh, the team that put this all together uh, for considering highlighting the space slash aerospace industry. Uh, I can assure you that uh, we very much appreciate the attention uh, because we've got a, a tremendous amount of work going on down here. And, and we've kind of been the, a, a secret, I guess, that, you know, and people have taken us for granted for so, much, for so long. But with everything that's going on in the commercial space industry, what's what, what's happening at NASA, it's 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 extremely exciting, and, and we're we're happy that uh, Houston Tech Rodeo has decided that uh, they would uh, highlight the space industry. So thank you for doing that. Um, we got a lot of questions uh, that we're, we're going to ask Cam this morning, so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Cam, please share your background as an entrepreneur uh, in the aerospace ecosystem with us. Sure, I, I, I'd be uh, delighted. You know, when uh, Neil Armstrong landed on surface of the moon, uh, I was uh, 11 years old and I truly were inspired that I, re I really wanted to be part of the space program. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, with that dream, uh, I went to the university and soon after I graduated, uh, started working on NASA program. This is like 1980. And uh, we're associated with NASA program overall about 40 years uh, today. Uh, but I work for some larger companies like Lockheed Martin and Ford Aerospace and uh, Loral Aerosys. And, uh, uh, you know, in 1994, I had this huge itch that really wanted to open my own company. And so me and another gentleman, Harold Stinger, uh, together, we formed SGP in December of 1994. And uh, we started basically just two of us in my basement, <laughs> moving some boxing around. That's how we got started. And, uh, and you know, uh, later on, we sort of uh, grew out of the small business category and uh, competed in, a, uh, you know, large uh, contracts. And um, by 2018, uh, we became the second uh, largest services provider to NASA as a whole with uh, contracts uh, at all the NASA centers. Uh, and uh, I sold the company to KBR, another Houston company in mm -hmm. 2018. But prior to that, I uh, had this, um, you know, uh, huge interest to be involved in other space ventures. Uh, and, uh, you know, started Intuitive Machine in 2013. 
uh, along with uh, Steve Altimus, uh, who's the former, uh, you know, uh, deputy center director at Johnson Space Center, and prior to that was the head of engineering. And that's been an incredible company. I'm sure we'll talk about that a little bit more. Uh, and then later on, 2016, uh, me and Michael Suffredini started Axiom Space. Uh, these two companies are uh, incredible in terms of transforming the commercial space. Um, um, and so, you know, I have a, you know, I would call myself a space cadet <laughs> of the space program. Love everything is going on in space and uh, um, involved in many activities uh, in that area. Cam, thanks. Those are great, uh, great comments. And what a background that you've, you've had. I'd like for you to dig a little bit deeper, uh, if you don't mind, talk to us a little bit more about Axiom Space and Intuitive Machines, uh, if you don't mind. Sure, sure. So uh, let me just talk about uh, Intuitive Machines first. Um, uh, I, I, I had such a, uh, such a privilege to really get to know Steve and, and uh, you know, he and I got together and we had uh, this dream of you re, you initially sort of use the space technology in medicine, energy and aerospace. And later on that evolved into, wow, we wanna create the lunar economy. And so we really put the whole focus of, of the company into that. And we were uh, very privileged to be successful uh, in winning a, a, a multiple award contract uh, with NASA. Uh, and uh, later on, uh, we won a contract to, uh, uh, you know, be able to uh, basically build a moon lander in Houston and be the first commercial space company landing on the surface of the moon first quarter next year. We're super, super excited about that. And later on in 2022, we're going to be the first organization ever in the history landing on the South Pole, which is quite challenging. And so uh, super excited about uh, all the stuff that that company is doing. Um, we're building a manufacturing facility at Ellington Airport. Uh, we do have a facility today uh, right there called I am North, but uh, we're working with the city and uh, building additional, uh, I believe, uh, close to 250,000 square feet of space. Uh, for uh, our moon lander facility called Nova C and later on Nova D and so on and so forth. Uh, so that's intuitive machine. Um, uh, it really is, is transforming the whole commercial space industry, especially with lunar economy. So Axiom Space uh, had a, a different story. Uh, I got together with uh, Michael Suffertini, who was the former uh, program manager for International Space Station for 10 years as he was retiring from NASA and uh, was looking for his next opportunities. And uh, he and I decided that, uh, wow, you know, wouldn't it be great that if we together uh, created a company to build the first private commercial space station. Uh, as you know, um, you know, NASA and the US government have decided that they're not gonna build a replacement for International Space Station. And so our thought was with our background knowledge, that would be a great thing to do. And it's been an ambitious project. Uh, we've come light years away since we started. Uh, we've, we've, we've been able to uh, successfully raise money for the company. Uh, and again, along with Intuitive Machine, we're building this massive uh, facility at Ellington Airport Spaceport Facility. Uh, and uh, really excited in terms of going forward we are taking uh, three private astronauts uh, to International Space Station January of next year. And uh, really super excited to be involved in that and be part of the Houston community. Wow. I tell you, these are fascinating projects and certainly a first of a kind for, for the commercial entities. Uh, and, and really appreciate your vision on that. But you know, with that, with that background, I'd love to, hear, love to understand what makes Houston an attractive area for these businesses. You know, I, I shared this with you. I, I was uh, um, uh, probably one of the largest uh, service provider to NASA Johnson Space Center at SGT. Uh, we had uh, contracts uh, close to $3 uh, uh, billion dollars actually with NASA uh, doing mission operation and some of the engineering and uh, other activities at Johnson Space Center. 
And I got really uh, excited about what Houston is all about as a space city. And, and I felt like, wow, this is really worth investing in. Uh, huge uh, amounts of talents that exist, uh, uh, engineering talent that exists, uh, uh, you know, at, at, at JSC and Houston. But I think the other part of it was the two people that uh, uh, I decided to co-found the company. They both lo- lived in Houston, loved Houston. And we decided, man, this would be a great place uh, to headquarter both of the companies. Uh, so I, I think it's a, f- a fantastic location and city been awesome. Uh, Johnson Space Center has been terrific uh, and, and uh, uh, we're really making huge progress going forward, hiring lots of people right now. Yeah, that's great. You know, Cam, uh, you know, we're in the business of recruiting companies here. And, you know, what I tell everybody is that I don't believe there's another city anywhere that has as many engineers as we do in the city of Houston, because every industry cluster that we have focuses and requires engineers. You got healthcare, you you got the space industry, you got chemical, uh, especially chemical, and you've you've got the oil and gas industry. So we're a tremendous amount of engineers and a tremendous amount of talent here. So, so thank you for that. Thank you for establishing them here. Okay. Uh, Cam, I know, I, I know you got your start at NASA and many of your companies have strong ties to American space agency. Uh, there is no doubt that the aerospace is booming and entering a new era of exploration with the growth of public private partnerships. Could you tell me some of the positive aspects commercialization brings to NASA and specifically to the Johnson space center? Yes, definitely. I tell you, I think it's been an uh, uh, incredible journey uh, working, uh, be associated with NASA for the last 40 years. Uh, but I think NASA made the determination that, hey, uh, it would be really good to bring the uh, commercial industry into fold. And it was a really, a, I would say, a transformative thinking in terms of that. And I think that sort of birthed uh, companies like SpaceX, for example, uh, working on a uh, private-public partnership with NASA. And, and later on, we really became the beneficiaries of that, both at Axiom Space uh, as well as uh, Intuitive Machines. But what it does, it's, it's, it, it sort of releases or unleashes this innovative thinking. Uh, if you visit our uh, facility at IM North, we have so many inventions that we've created and so many innovations that we've developed. And, and the reason for that is you got limited amount of money and you, you got to create, uh, you know, uh, lots of bang with limited amount of bucks, right? And that sort of forces you to think differently, to think out of the box uh, and not think in a traditional ways. Um, and if you look at, you know, other commercial space companies, they've been able to achieve, uh, you know, significant progress with a lot less money. Uh, and sort of break the fold. And I think this is going to continue. Um, and so both Intuitive Machine and Axiom Space is all about innovation, think out of the box, and, and figure out how we're going to bend the cost curve at the same time, focus on safety and focus on achieving results. So I think we're in a new era, honestly, in a commercial space. We're at the beginning of the new era. And I would even say it's sort of like early days of internet you know, sky's the limit in terms of what the commercial space along with the government uh, can do to, fur- to further the state of humanity and, and, and human knowledge. Great. Well, thank you, Cam. So Barry, the Barry Houston Economic Partnership uh, has been very, very involved from the, from the very beginning and the first conversations about creating a spaceport. And uh, we're excited about what's going on over there. And I, and, I, and I know the answer to this question I'm about to ask you, but I don't think the people that are listening know the answer to that. So will either of your Houston-based companies uh, be involved in this effort at the Houston Space Board? Definitely, absolutely, positively, yes. And we're so excited to work with the city in that. In fact, we, we, uh, both companies recently agreed and uh, to work with the city. Our city has been terrific. Uh, you know, altogether, I think we're building close to 500,000 square feet of space for Axiom Space and Intuitive Machines altogether uh, at the spaceport at Ellington Airport. Uh, one is really for uh, Axiom Space, uh, which is close to 322,000 square feet, uh, where we're going to sort of really build a, uh, you know, the, the first private commercial space station and bring all the stuff into Houston. 
uh, integrate test and getting it ready. And uh, also Intuitive Machine uh, is gonna have a huge facility uh, at the airport. Uh, you know, um, that we're, we're gonna, this is gonna be our, our, our facility where we build the moon landers, next generation of moon landers and being able to carry even more and more weight uh, to the surface of the moon. So absolutely positively, and we're super excited to partner with the city and being able to do that. And we really appreciate that. Uh, you know, we, we always felt like if, you know, if we, we build it, they will come. And, and you've certainly done that. We, we went out on a limb uh, about two years ago to, to get the money from the city of Houston to put the, you know, the roads and the uh, sewers and the fiber optics and every, all that in. And the, the city had made a commitment to that to the tune of about $22 million. And now look what's happening. So yeah. we, we appreciate that. So I understand in addition to your commercial and entrepreneurial uh, spirit, you have a desire to explore interstellar human travel. Mm -hmm. uh, can you share uh, any initiatives and projects you may have uh, undertaken recently? Yes, absolutely. I'd be happy to do that. Uh, I tell you um, a, a, a quick story, Bob. I mean, our universe is so massive. Uh, I was involved with, uh, uh, at Goddard Space Flight Center with Hubble Space Telescope. And for a long time, uh, we thought that outside of our galaxy, there are billion other galaxies. And, uh, you know, to just sort of look at our galaxy, Milky Way, outside our solar system, from one point to another is about 100,000 light years. So if you want to go from one place, uh, our, our galaxy to the other point, the furthest point, it would take 100,000 light years, right? Uh, and then, you know, let's say leaving our galaxy for a long time, we thought there were only billion other galaxies. Now we know there are trillion other galaxies. Uh, and so the way I sort of explained it many years ago to my son when he was 10 years old, I said, son, if you sort of look at the, the, the vastness of space, you know, and look at all the oceans on earth, right? And all the grains of sands on all the beaches and all the oceans uh, that we have on earth. You know, our solar system is like one grain of sand in, in sort of that massive amounts of sands that exist on our planet, right? And so I had this sort of desire that, you know, how do we explore that? <clears throat> but more importantly, how do you connect it to education and to our children to sort of think out of the box and say, how do we travel beyond our solar system to our galaxy and beyond? <clears throat> so that was, uh, excuse me, that was the, the thoughts or maybe the principles behind uh, creating the beautiful organization we've created as a nonprofit 501c3 called Limitless Space Institute that also is located in Houston, uh, very close in Clear Lake area uh, next to Johnson Space Center. And the idea behind this organization is really an educational institution, is, is definitely inspiring the next generation to uh, think about uh, space, think about STEM, uh, and think about how to limitlessly think and think out of the box, uh, as well as educate. Uh, so uh, we're doing all kinds of different things in terms of education. Um, we work with Texas A&M very closely in uh, all kinds of different activities we're involved with um, and, and do incredible amount of research and development. Uh, so uh, the organization has started. Um, I've provided this seed funding. And, uh, you know, my expectation is that, that this organization, as we go forward, would be similar to like Jet Proportion Laboratory or uh, applied physics lab, uh, you know, with uh, $100 million or more yearly budget. And, and we're really doing quite a bit of education uh, uh, as well as research and development and inspiring the next generation to think limitlessly beyond our solar system. Wow, exciting stuff. I gotta tell you, Cam, you got, you got quite a vision, okay? <laughs> quite a vision. Okay, so all these efforts are happening here in Houston. Given that you have been working in this sector and in Texas for decades, how has it changed? Well, I, I really think that, uh, you know, first of all, you know, Bob, thank you to you and, and all the players who've been involved to really make Spaceport a reality. 
Um, you know, I mean, Houston is a great city and it's a really a space city with the Johnson Space Center. This is where, you know, we did all the astronaut, we do all the astronaut training and, you know, we have the largest pool uh, in the world where we have a mock space station, right? And, and, and so with the, with the advent of commercial space, uh, things have changed quite a bit, right? And uh, I think it's a great place um, to, to even further the space exploration, you know, right outside the gates of uh, Johnson Space Center. Like you indicated, I think it's a great city with uh, uh, lots of talent, lots of engineering, great place to live. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're super excited to be part of the community and uh, grow our businesses uh, right inside the city. Uh, you know, I, I tell people all the time, Houston is a great place to, to live because I've been here 66 years. So <laughs> I, I certainly like it. <laughs> we, okay. Yeah. So um, next question is, what are the opportunities for growth do you see in Houston's aerospace ecosystem? Yeah. So um, again, uh, I, I think that um, uh, we're at the early stages of commercial space business. And my thinking is, Right now, probably between Intuitive Machine and uh, Axiom Space, we're thinking about probably hiring close to 1,500 to 2,000 people uh, the next few years. These are all high-tech jobs uh, in an aerospace uh, space business that is, is, is great jobs. And so we're, we're creating all these jobs that I think terrific right in, in the city of Houston, you know, at Ellington Airport. Um, so it's really evolving and, and, and we're at early days. So I really encourage people to think about, um, you know, uh, STEM and education and space uh, and uh, uh, look up intuitive machine axiom space for opportunities because we're, we're looking to hire lots and lots of people soon. Okay, thank you, Kim. So uh, you, you probably answered this kind of this question in different ways but I'm gonna to try to get you to try to summarize here at the end of this, and then we're gonna probably take some questions uh, from, from the chat room, but why is Houston so important to the future of human space exploration? And again, you've answered that kind of along the way, but maybe kind yeah. of summarize it. Yeah, I mean, look, uh, if you sort of look at which of the, uh, you know, if you look at the, all the places that uh, NASA has centers at, I think Houston and, and Johnson Space Center is a, is a, is a, is a very, uh, huge center in human exploration. It has incredible amount of legacy. Um, and, uh, and I think it's a great place to build businesses, great place to live. Um, you know, I mean, we're not too far from downtown Houston with all the activities that involve. Uh, and I, I think it's an exciting place to be involved with. I'm super excited. That's why I bought a place uh, there. And I actually live in Houston about half time. So, um, I'm, I'm super excited to be part of it. Cam, thanks a lot. It's, uh, this has been a great conversation. Uh, Sonny, I think I'm going to turn it over to you now to see if we've uh, anybody sent any questions in through the chat. There he goes. Sonny, are you there? Yes, I, I'm here. Fro's going to uh, pass some of those questions along. Fro Cespedes, uh, you got some questions? Good morning. Yes, sir, I do. We have a question from George Young that asked, uh, what does Houston need to do to help the oil gas engineers move into the space industry? Can yeah. I, let, me take, let me take a shot at that too first, Cam. So back, if you go back to when the Constellation program uh, was canceled, the shuttle retired, we, had, we lost 4,000 people at JSC in, in contractors. And I, I kept telling people that these, these engineers can move over, the, over into other industries in oil and gas and medical and all that. Make a long story short, we received money from the state of Texas to cross-train these and train them into other industries. Of the, of the over 4,000 people that we lost, 85% of those people stayed here. Majority of them went into the healthcare, went into oil and gas. So... It's going to be, and I, and I tell people, they say, well, they're aerospace engineers. Well, no, they're mechanical engineers first. They're, they're electrical engineers. They're, they just have a passion for space. We can't lose them. we got to keep them here. So it's the, same, it's the same process. I mean, when it happens like that, they can transition to space. 
it, it'll happen. So, Cam, I'll give you a better another shot at it. No, I, I think what you said, Bob, is exactly right. So there are a lot of disciplines that we need, like electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, electromechanical engineers, and, and uh, you know, you're exactly right. So many of the people that we have from oil and gas can be applicable very much so into the space business. Uh, you know, it requires for sure training and getting to know what the business is like, but it's totally doable. Right, absolutely. We do have uh, other questions. Uh, Nanam has asked, what can other entrepreneurs learn from your experience and in investment in the Houston space industry? Yeah, um, well, you know, um, uh, being entrepreneur and 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 trying to do things that has never uh, been done before, uh, it takes some boldness, right? <laughs> and and you gotta you gotta imagine, you know, the name of uh, the name that you see behind me uh, is the, the organization where I manage about forty different companies, uh, and it's called IBX. And IBX stands for Imagine, Believe, Execute, and that's really the answer. Imagine the future you're looking to have uh, and believe in it, that you can do it. And then uh, you really gotta uh, uh, get off your rear end and go do it and, 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 and make the commitment to do it, right? So both for Intuitive Machine and, um, and, and also uh, Axiom Space and many other companies that I've created, uh, of course it takes uh, financial resources, but more than that, it requires passion it requires belief and it requires hard work. Uh, and, uh, and so, but the first, you know, the journey of thousand miles starts with the first step. You got to sort of start getting into it and, and, and believe in it uh, and go do it. Just go do it. And, uh, and that's, how, that's how I've done it. And I think that's the lessons learned for others. Thank you, Dr. Gafarian. I have one other question that says, are the jobs mostly for engineers or would there be business type opportunities? Uh, for both. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad somebody asked that question. No, we have lots of, uh, actually we've, in both of the companies right now, we've hired a lot of engineers and most of the people right now we're looking for, I would say are business types uh, from finance to accounting, uh, to human resources. Um, you know, so yeah, definitely right now we're looking for more business people than we're looking for engineers. In fact, at, at, the, at this juncture. Cam, can I add to that as well? Sure. You know, for the first time in, in Houston's history, we're going to be building things, making things, manufacturing things here in Houston. Okay. Uh, we've always just done the engineering, but if you, if you look at what's going on at Axiom, you look at what's going on at intuitive machines, we're actually putting things together and manufacturing things. So one of the needs is gonna be technicians, okay? And technicians are gonna be very, very important. And that's why we created the Edge Center uh, with San Jacinto College to, to train technicians for the industry that's, that's, that's right upon us. Yeah. And if I can add to that, Bob, Absolutely. Uh, actually Intuitive Machine works very closely with uh, San Jacinto University and, and we, we find a way to collaborate where we bring the student in as, as, uh, as interns and as technicians and, and later on they become employees and I think that's been uh, remarkably successful for us. You know, uh, just a little bit of background. You're the first class of San Jacinto College that came out of the Ed Center. Uh, there was three interns Okay, and you got that work for you guys, and they graduated, and you hired them. Yes. <laughs> so we're looking forward to uh, more intern opportunities as well. Yes, definitely, definitely. Well, Bob, think... Dr. Gafarian, we really appreciate uh, your time uh, this morning for uh, taking time and speaking to us here in the Zoom meeting, and we look forward to seeing you guys in the future. We really appreciate your time. One more comment. I'd like, I want to thank Dr. Grafarian as well. I really appreciate you sharing your, your time with us. And uh, I want to thank Houston Tech Rodeo again for focusing on the space and aerospace industry in our region. Thank, thank you so much. I also want to express my gratitude and appreciation, Bob, to you and uh, all you've done and City of Houston. Uh, we're excited to go forward. And uh, thank you so much for this opportunity to have this conversation. Great. Thank you.